Hey friends, welcome back to day number 15. This is uh, going to be holiday credit rule building block that we're going to see today. And as you know, this is the continuation of the last video that we've seen. So under pay rules or rather pay policies, the in the last video, we've seen contributing shifts and work history qualifiers. And as I said, I have separately created this video because these are optional building blocks. So today we're going to see focus more on the holiday credit rule, the building block. And we're also going to see the one that we've created in the past. Uh, we're going to see how we can assign that in the holiday credit rule. But before we actually go into the holiday credit rule, let me show you exactly what holiday credit rule does uh, by means of the time count. So earlier in day number 13, we've created um, different holidays, right? So you may remember that. Uh, if not, then I'll put the playlist link in the description and you can go through the videos as well. So if you go to the time card, so Jan 1st is the is the holiday, New Year's Day. So as you can see on Jan 1st, the holiday that we've created, it shows up on, the, on that particular day on the time card grid. However, under totals, you can see there is no pay code that is generated for holiday. So if, if an employee is not working on a on a public holiday or on a holiday, then um, there won't be any pay code generated. So if this holiday has to be paid to the employee, they, as you know, there should be a pay code generated. So in the holiday credit rule, we will define what pay code should be generated for holidays. So when the employee is having a holiday, that day what should be the pay code that should be generated on the time card for that particular day okay i hope that is clear why we are doing a holiday credit rule and uh, more on the holiday credit rule when we go into the building block so let's go straight into the holiday credit rule and uh, let's open a new one there is already one which is existing i'm going to create a new one i'll name it as holiday credit rule demo all right, so there are a few criteria which can be set up under uh, the eligibility tab. So there are basically two tabs that you will have to work on. One is the eligibility. Uh, the eligibility criteria by default is holiday. However, there are a few things which you can, which you may have to use. Again, all of these are optional but this will come into picture as per your requirements defined by your customer. So if the customer says that for the new year day, for the holiday, new year's day, if you have to earn that eight hours of holiday credit for, for that holiday, you should be working before the holiday or you should be working after the holiday or either before or after holiday or maybe on the holiday itself so these are some of the the criterias that uh, some of you might come across uh, based on the customer requirement and then right here at the bottom you have the work history qualifier if you remember in the previous session we've created the contributing shift and the work history qualifiers and now once the work history qualifier is defined we will assign that in the holiday credit rule. So do you remember why we use the work history qualifier and the contributing shift? That is if there is any requirement defined by your customer saying that if the employee to get that holiday credit of eight hours should be working for minimum of 15 shifts in the last 13 days, uh, 30 days, and each shift should be minimum of six hours so for that in order to meet that requirement you will need to create the contributing shift and the work history qualifiers once the work history qualifiers is created you will assign that in the work history selected work history qualifiers under this section okay if you are no if there is no requirement then you don't have to select this and then at the bottom there are a few more options that uh, like minimum time employed, minimum time active. If there is certain requirement that the client might say that the employee should be employed for at least uh, 180 days 
and out of these 100 and 180 days the employee should be active for at least 145 days in this 180 day right from the higher date or from a specific date so these are further conditions that you may come across seldom uh, seldomly but you never know when you will have such customer who will have this requirement so once you define these options if there are any if there are none then you can just leave the default option under the eligibility tab and then move on to the credits tab in the credits you will have to define what will be the credit amount right here and if it is eight hours the same amount will show up here in this section as well so let's go to the credits and the credit type is fixed number of hours and the amount is eight hours like typically employee works for eight hours if you have a part-time employee then you will have to create another holiday credit rule for part-timers and give four hours so if your working hours are nine and then one hour of break rule or rather one hour of lunch break then it will be eight hours so that is why i am giving here as eight hours and there is this asterisk that means this is a mandatory uh, one for you to define the pay code so credit goes into which pay code so you can select the pay code which you may have created earlier uh, i'm going to select holidays so what that means is now you see there is no pay code but now we just define in the holiday credit rule that the pay code should be holiday and the fixed number of hours should be eight so once we create this we're going to come back here and test our configuration so that's it all you need to do is define two things here under credits one is the amount and the credit goes in the pay code these are the two things that you need to do and once you're done that's it friends your holiday credit rule is created i'm going to click on save and return so we've created the entire holiday credit building block so we've created the contributing shifts work history qualifiers as well as the holiday credit rule now finally the holiday credit rule has to be assigned somewhere by now you will have uh, a fair understanding of where we assign this yes if you guessed it as payroll then you are absolutely right we will assign this in the payroll so i'm going to go into the payroll that this employee has and in the holiday credit rule i'm going to change it to the one that we just created which is the holiday credit rule demo i'm going to click on update this version and save and return so let's go back to the time card and do a gentle refresh okay so let's refresh that one more time if not let's go back to our uh, payroll and make sure that under the holidays we have the uh, holiday for new year as holiday credit rule demo so at times it requires a refresh or at times you might have to sign out and sign in back so let me just refresh this from here and uh, check this let me just sign out and sign back there we go so this is the holiday that we define in the holiday credit rule and this is the fixed hours fixed amount of hours that we define eight hours and the same thing that you can see here as well which is eight hours so this is actually coming from the holiday credit rule so if you do not create the holiday credit rule you now know what will happen you will only see the holiday on the time card grid but you will not see any pay code here so for the holiday uh, to be paid or if the, you want to send this pay code to the the payroll um, partners then you need to define that pay code in the holiday credit rule so that is how you can create the holiday credit rule i hope you found this uh, video informative uh, do give me a like and if you want to know more about bronos please subscribe and i will see you in the next video till then take care and be safe guys thank you